Good evening. I'm Peter Mansbridge, and this is The National. How can Canadians be assured of the integrity of any of this evidence? The Senate-related emails that suddenly resurfaced, and today's promise of more to come. The Senate scandal took another unexpected and unprecedented turn today. The Speaker of the Senate held a news conference. He said he did it because there has to be public trust in the institution that has been battered and bruised throughout this year. His move came less than 24 hours after the Prime Minister's office announced the sudden reappearance of emails related to the Wright Duffy deal that it originally had said were gone, deleted, irretrievable. The CBC's Rosemary Barton has more on all this. Rosemary. Peter, we know from court documents the RCMP believe emails from the Prime Minister's former lawyer, Benjamin Perrin, are key to their investigation. Today, it is one step closer to getting them and learning what Perrin's role in the Wright Duffy deal might have been. It was here that Perrin's emails reappeared three months after the initial RCMP request. The Privy Council, the bureaucratic office for the Prime Minister, first told the RCMP and PMO they had been deleted. Turns out the emails weren't gone, but had been kept frozen in relation to another legal matter involving another government department. The opposition tried to use it all to chip away at the government's credibility. How can Canadians be assured of the integrity of any of this evidence when the Conservative government has been withholding it for three months. Allow me to quote directly from the uh, RCMP's uh, uh, information to obtain their document, which said that um, the legal representative for the PMO advised my office that he had clear orders from the Prime Minister to provide complete cooperation with the investigation. Quietly benched behind Pierre Poiliev, the man who had been taking all the questions on the issue, Paul Calandra. Perrin's emails will undoubtedly reveal more about the Wright Duffy deal, given the RCMP alleges he was central to the negotiations of Duffy's so called conditions and spoke regularly with Duffy's lawyer, Janice Payne. Perrin's emails may also tell us about what exactly Nigel Wright was referencing when he wrote in an email that he needed to speak to the PM. And then less than an hour later, we are good to go from the PM once Ben has his confirmation from Payne. Well, good morning, everybody. Also today, confirmation yet more emails and potentially more answers are also heading to the RCMP. In an extraordinary move, the Speaker of the Senate, Noel Kinsella, threw open the doors of the Red Chamber to cameras and journalists in an attempt to defend the Senate. This has to be a, a, a learning moment for the institution. Kinsella says the Senate is cooperating with the RCMP and within the next couple of weeks will turn over emails from four senators, something the Speaker could have tried to refuse because of parliamentary privilege. Parliamentary privilege cannot be used as a shield. The Privy Council office has since apologized to both the Prime Minister's office and the RCMP for the email mix-up. But this once again shows no matter how hard the government tries to move on from this, it has become almost impossible to contain. Peter. All right, Rosie, thank you. Rosemary Barton in Ottawa. Well, one of the senators suspended over his expenses has a new job. Patrick Brazo will be freelance reporting for Frank magazine. Brazo, who is still a senator, filled out an application today for a parliamentary press pass. He says there is no conflict of interest in his covering his former colleagues. This is about uh, an exercise in trying to uh, get to the heart of the matter, uh, asking some very direct questions and hopefully getting answers to questions that uh, many Canadians deserve. Rousseau has not had the best relationship with his new colleagues. He famously insulted CP's Jennifer Ditchburn on Twitter for reporting his poor Senate attendance record. Rousseau is currently facing charges of sexual assault and assault.